Hi friends, it's Milo. Welcome to the lower extremity area of anatomy land. Most people refer to this area of the body as the leg, so we made this area of the park Roman legend themed. See what we did there? <laughs> we'll start our exploration in Rome and learn the anatomical structures around the hip joint. Similar to how there would be no Roman Empire without Rome, without the hip joint, the lower extremity would not exist. The gluteal and femoral regions both have muscles that act on the hip joint, but we'll start with the gluteal first, as it is the most proximal part of the lower extremity. There are nine muscles in the gluteal region. In this video, we will focus on the four superficial gluteal muscles. To emphasize this, the scene takes place above ground in the Colosseum. Oh, let's get a ready to rumble! First up is General Gluteus Maximus. Abducted commander of the armies of the lower extremity, general of the femoral legions, loyal servant to the true emperor Hippus Jointus, father to an abducted Gluteus Minimus, husband to an abducted Gluteus Medius, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. Sorry, I'm not sure what came over me there. Anyway, General Gluteus Maximus represents, conveniently, the Gluteus Maximus muscle. He is a mighty gladiator and has notched dozens of victories in the Colosseum. But instead of massive weapons, General Gluteus Maximus holds a plethora of seemingly non-intimidating items in his hands. As a reminder, in anatomy land, anything held in the character's right signifies the origin of the muscle, and anything in the character's left signifies the insertion. There are three things in his right hand. The first item he's holding is a rope, but it's what's on the other end of the rope that matters. Have a look at that ferocious-looking lion. He even sports a collar with William engraved on it. Let William the Lion remind you that the first origin of the gluteus maximus is the ilium of the pelvis. Next, look at the bottle of sacred rum. Sacred rum, sake, red rum, sacrum, aha. I guess a little liquid courage before an epic battle never hurts. Lastly, the rooster represents the gluteus maximus muscle's third point of origin, the coccyx. Our feathered friend should help you remember the coccyx for obvious reasons. Wow, the gluteus maximus muscle has a lot of origin points, but lucky for us, this muscle only has one point of insertion, the iliotibial tract. This is a long, fibrous thickening of the thigh's deep fascia that runs from the ilium to the tibia, hence the ilio and tibial parts to the name. To help you remember the iliotibial tract, we'll have General Gluteus Maximus hold a pamphlet in his left hand. On the pamphlet, we see Libyan flags as well as our favorite lion, William. It looks like they got William out here all the way from Libya. Let William and Libya remind you of ilio and tibial. Clearly, our friend Max is aware of the age-old adage, know thy enemy. For actions, the gluteus maximus muscle extends, abducts, and laterally rotates the thigh at the hip. When done together, these actions result in a stance that looks like a back kick in karate. Therefore, we'll have General Gluteus Maximus standing strong on one leg and kicking out at his opponents with the other. Standing next to General Gluteus Maximus is his wife, Gluteus Medius. This powerful woman represents the Gluteus Medius muscle. She is also holding a rope to subdue William in her right hand, which once again represents the ilium. The toy lemur in her left hand reminds us that the gluteus medius muscle inserts on the femur. Since lemur sounds like femur, we thought it would be a good way to remember the term. Notice how the lemur holds a giant chariot wheel? It does this because the gluteus medius muscle inserts specifically on the greater trochanter of the femur. The term trochanter is derived from the Greek word trochos, which means wheel. Hope that helps you remember that the greater trochanter is a specific part of the femur. While the main function of the gluteus medius muscle is to abduct the thigh at the hip, the anterior fibers medially rotate the thigh at the hip, while the posterior fibers laterally rotate the thigh at the hip. To show this, we'll have gluteus medius kicking out one leg and indicate that she is twisting it back and forth at her hip joint, like a ballerina. 
Next to this powerful couple, you'll see their son, gluteus minimus, who represents the gluteus minimus muscle. Like both his parents, gluteus minimus holds a rope to subdue William, indicating that his origin also lies on the ilium. Phew, looks like lion wrangling is a family business for sure. Also, little Minimus is holding a lemur with a giant chariot wheel in his left hand, indicating that, like the gluteus medius, the gluteus minimus also inserts on the greater trochanter of the femur. The gluteus minimus muscle abducts and medially rotates the thigh at the hip. When done together, these actions result in a stance that looks like one just did a taekwondo-like sidekick. Therefore, we'll have gluteus minimus doing a strong sidekick to beat back opponents in the area. Lastly, we come to a woman watching the entire match. She is wearing a latte face mask and is here to support her favorite gladiator family. She represents the tensor fasciae latte and is named so because of her latte-shaped face mask. She's also a little tense because the match is about to begin. Like the members of the gluteus family, our latte face mask supporter holds a rope in her right hand to subdue William as well, indicating that the tensor fasciae latte muscle originates on the ilium, specifically the anterior superior iliac spine. Talk about an avid fan! In her left hand, our fan holds a William Libyan pamphlet, which symbolizes that the tensor fasciae latte also inserts into the iliotibial tract. Clearly, Maximus's greatest fan is also curious about his greatest foe. For action, the tensor fasciae latte muscle flexes, abducts, and medially rotates the thigh at the hip. When done together, these actions result in a stance that looks like one is about to do a high karate kick. Therefore, we'll have our avid fan pretending she is in the arena with the family and acting out a kick to repel her foes. Now, let's discuss the vasculature. Here in Anatomy Land, we use pipes and other water-transferring devices to symbolize vasculature. Since this area of the park is Roman legon-themed, we'll use Roman aqueducts to symbolize the major blood vessels. Like the pipes of today, Roman aqueducts transferred water over hundreds of miles so that its citizens could have access to clean water. The superior gluteal artery supplies the buttocks, or gluteal areas, superficial muscle grouping. It enters this region via the greater sciatic foramen and then breaks into a superficial and deep branch. To remind you of the superior gluteal artery, we'll draw a silver aqueduct with the gluteus family crest, which ironically enough is a pair of butt cheeks, and have it entering the arena via a large archway. The silver color will help you recall the superior part of the name, while the cheeks will help you remember the gluteal part. Be aware that, before reaching the gluteus family, the aqueduct splits into two smaller branches, and on both, the color and pattern continue. The first branch continues above the ground and runs by General Gluteus Maximus. This represents the superficial branch of the superior gluteal artery, which supplies the gluteus maximus muscle. The second branch dives underground and represents the deep branch of the superior gluteal artery. It supplies the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciae latte muscles. Since the deep branch of the superior gluteal artery runs between the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles, let's have the aqueduct run underground between the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus characters. Next, let's discuss the nerves. For this area of anatomy land, we use lightning bolts to symbolize the nerves. We chose this symbol because Jupiter was the Roman god of thunder and lightning. There are two nerves that innervate this muscle grouping. First, there is the inferior gluteal nerve. It innervates the gluteus maximus muscle, so let's have an ivory lightning bolt with a gluteus family crest on it, hitting the ground near general gluteus maximus. The ivory color will help you remember the inferior part of the name, while the gluteus crest will help you recall the gluteal part of the name. The bolt's proximity to the general will remind you that this nerve innervates the gluteus maximus muscle. The second nerve is the superior gluteal nerve, and it innervates the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciae latte muscles. 
To show this nerve, we'll draw a silver lightning bolt with a gluteus family logo, striking near gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and sponsor fasciae latae. The lightning bolt's proximity to these three characters will remind you that the superior gluteal nerve innervates the muscles they represent. Next, let's discuss pathologies. There is only one you should know for this muscle grouping, and it is injury to the superior gluteal nerve. Remember, the superior gluteal nerve innervates the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciae latae muscles. Thus, any injury to this nerve will affect these muscles and their actions. The classic way to identify a superior gluteal nerve injury is to have the patient stand on one leg. A patient with this injury will have their pelvis descend on the unsupported side or the side opposite of the leg on which the patient is standing. This dissension is called a positive Trandellenburg test. To remind you of this pathology, we'll put a trendy bird in the scene and place a beat-up silver lightning bolt with a gluteal crest design. In addition, let's have the trendy bird stand on one leg with its unsupported hip descending. Okay, that's it for the buttocks, or gluteal region, superficial muscle grouping. There are four muscles, one artery, and two nerves. The muscles are the gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciae latae. The superior gluteal artery has two branches. The superficial branch supplies the gluteus maximus muscle, while the inferior branch supplies the other three. The inferior gluteal nerve innervates the gluteus maximus muscle, while the superior gluteal nerve innervates the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensor fasciae latae. For pathologies, an injury to the superior gluteal nerve results in a positive Trendelenburg test. All right, let's head underneath the arena to learn about the gluteal area's deep muscle grouping.